Keisha, you are that girl. I know you see me. You can you see me? KP, I know you see me calling you girl. Ooh, KG, that was cute. Yes, ma'am, KG. I know this service is working. I have Verizon Wireless. Our service don't break down. No. Yes, Janae. Work me, Janae. You have an incoming call, girl. Answer the phone. Oh my God, we got Miss Carla in the building. Hey. Oh. <laughs> is this the CIA? Oh girl, she's gonna arrest me, honey. Oh, girl, <laughs> what is going on, Miss Carla? Nothing much, you know, I just moved to Houston. So just learning and living and enjoying my great life. I know Houston, I know it's nice out there. I've it's been hot. in Houston. Yes. It's hot. It gets in the hundreds. It's 104 today, actually. Uh, oh. Uh-uh. See, <laughs> that, see, uh-uh. We can't do that. Uh-uh. So how you been? I've been good. It was a little sad leaving Jackson State for the most part, but I'm getting better, you know, the further away it gets from graduation. So I'm doing better. I'm missing school. I'm missing my girls. Yes. Yes. You're going to miss it. you definitely going to miss it. Because when I graduated, I missed it. Okay? Trust me. But do me a favor and introduce yourself. Okay, hello y'all. My name is Kyla Jones. I am a former four-year Princeton JC. I was the captain for the 2022-2023 school year. I was the 51st JC captain. And yeah, I think that's everything. You better know it. <laughs> <laughs> so what inspired you to dance? Um, when I was like 11 years old, I had a friend. Her name was Kaya. And she had a big sister. Her sister used to always come home with these elaborate, like, uniforms and fringe and songs. I'm like, girl, I want to wear that. Where are you going? And she's <laughs> like, well, my team has a tryout coming up. And it was the Divas of Olive Branch. She's like, my team has a tryout coming up, and you should come. So I went and I auditioned. I had a little bit of dance experience, just a little bit. So mm -hmm. I went in, and during that time, it was Bring It. So Bring It was recording the um, tryout. And I was very nervous. I'm like, oh my God, it's all these cameras. I see all these girls with the uniforms. It was uniforms for me. So okay. I made the team. I was number, I think, 18. And yeah, I started my dance career with it. So you say that, you know, before Divas of Olive Branch that you had, you know, other dance experiences. Like, what did you do prior to? Um, For about, I think, maybe a year. I did ballet when I was about 10. But I didn't get really far into it. But I just know mm -hmm. I had, like, some of the basic things. So it kind of helped in tryouts as far as like, I used to, I could always flip. So that helped in stunts and splits and pointed toes. So just small things. Yeah, yeah. So how was your experience on Divas of Olive Branch? Whew. I would say that I didn't really have like the regular middle school childhood life because it was on yeah. the road a lot. And when Bring It first came out, it was very high demand. And oh, we got to go here this weekend. We're going out of town this weekend. And, uh, we even did some international stuff. So it was just kind of mm. like, oh, I didn't do the Friday night games thing or the Saturday skating. You know, I was gone a lot. But I would say I enjoyed my time as a diva. It really matured me at a young age as far as, like, my professional side. My dance resume grew at, like, the age of 12. So it was very, very fun. I would say I would prefer community dance team trips over collegiate trips just because it's just the atmosphere was different. It was yeah. way different. Yeah. Um so being on, you know, Divas of Olive Branch, how was Neva as a coach? Neva is, that's my ace of cool. Like, okay. she is a lady. I know people have that whole mindset of her from Bring It, but I tell y'all, she is the sweetest lady. She, well, when it comes to them stands, she doesn't play. But okay. as a person, she's very, like, loving. Like, there's nothing I cannot talk to Miss Neva about to this day. And I would say she was a great coach. Everybody knows her. She come in, she do her extra but she had to finish the touches that made it just like, wow. Like, me mm. personally, I might be a little biased. I would say Neva is the one who introduced, you know, the theatrics and the themes and the backdrops and all of that to the major at world. Yeah. So what would you say you learned from Neva throughout your, you know, um, dance experience? Miss Neva taught me so much. Uh, one thing I can say, she taught me about professionalism. We going to get down when it's time to get down. But when we leave that bring the scene, it's needed back to her million dollar money job. Like she can switch okay. up. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love me some Diva though. Diva is real. She's very genuine too. Like she's yeah. so sweet and genuine. Like, you don't say how she like, feels. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like you said, people going to have like their 
their thoughts about her, but she's very nice. Like, she's very nice. So how was it, like, being on TV, you being young? Like, how was it being on TV? Um, With my team being the underdog team or, you know, the most hated team, it was kind of hard, like, going to school, and they will be like, you know, stinky divas, or, you know, things people would say like yeah. that, especially with me leading. And I was leading at the age of 12, and I had girls that was 18, 19, 20. So I was mm. the youngest, you know, getting all that slack. It was different. It was fun. It was very exposing, you know, because before I did dance, I did like modeling and acting. So it kind of went hand in hand with, you know, how you act on screen and off screen. Right. So it, it had its moments where it was good. It had its, a lot of moments when it was bad as well. So let me ask you this question, because, girl, I know I would be tired. All right, girl. <laughs> I'm sick of it, like, for real. Pom-pom, girl. Like, the pom-pom question. I know you are tired of that pom-pom question. Like, girl. I hope Pam doesn't hate me. She don't I really hate hope she me. doesn't hate me. But I am over the question. Like, I think I was 12. That's before I made the challenge team or the battle squad. And that was my first time, like, seeing them for real do their, their TV thing. And I was just hype. I'm like, I was a little ghetto back then. But I'm just okay. hype. Like, don't y'all play with my team like that? And okay. for like that wasn't a scripted moment. That was like some for real heated ghetto hood ratness. But you know, right. I know they're not a little bit of ghetto hood. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm tired of the question. Y'all know that's me. Stop playing. Right. Every every time I'm in squad buddies, is that you, Kyla? What you think? Who you? Like, who that else was, is it? That's honestly eleven years ago. Eleven. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So do you think being a being on Divas of Olive Branch really prepared you to become a Prince and J set? Yes. It, I had a lot of stamina just from the fact that field shows used to go from 20 minutes to 25 minutes back then. It taught me showmanship. It taught me, you know, as far as uniforms. Me and Miss Neva, we was hand in hand putting them uniforms together. Mm -hmm. She'd be high gluing, I'd be sewing, she'd be sewing, I'd be high gluing. We just, you know, we made a really good team. So it was just preparing me. Almost kind of like sponsor wise, like it was a lot of things I did behind the scenes that helped the team as long as you know, making the uniforms or you know, just get stuff together, basically. Yeah, Captain. yeah, yeah. Uh, leadership things, just so yeah, right. So, what would you say, in your opinion, what would you say is the definition of a Prince and J set? To me, a Prince and J set is a well rounded woman. She has the amazing 10 out of 10 skills on the field and the same 10 out of 10 skills, you know, in her professional life, in the classroom. Just a woman of standards. Yeah. That's yeah, most thing. definitely. Uh, if somebody just came up to you and they did not know about Prince and J sales, what three words would you describe the Prince and J set as? Thrilling, energetic, and acrobatic. When you look yeah. for J-Fish, you always looking for that wow factor. You're looking for what stunts they doing today. It's just full of energy. Like, when I talk to other dancers, they always say, oh, my God, you guys have the hardest counts. And to me, it's kind of just like, I don't know, it's second nature because I've done it so long. I'm just like, it doesn't feel that hard. When I look at other dance teams, it's like, they look intricate. But to everyone else, they say j -Sess is probably the hardest style to learn. Yes, it's pretty hard. A lot of people... A lot of people just don't understand like the movements and uh, you having to change hand formations and you having to, it's it's a lot. <laughs> it could be a lot. The, trend, the, um, the whole um, TikTok trend was so funny to watch because when it gets to the yes. JC accounts, it's never right. It's never right. right. But it's so <laughs> cute. It's so cute. But it's just like, oh, it kind of irks me just a little bit because it's just small things that make JC, you know, different from other dance styles. Exactly. 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 So what would you say gravitated you to the JC? Like what made you want to try out? Ooh, I think it was just the originalness. Like everything was just original. The boots, I love the the, the style you know, the boots. I don't know. I just really loved it. Like I also, you know, growing up in the White Haven area, you seen Tiara, you seen KK, you seen Jasmine, you seen all these greats who would come and coach around. I'm like, I want to dance like them. They look great. They've done graduated and they still look good. So the style that they was instilling towards my team is like, you know, I want to take it further than just her coming in and teaching this great style for a few weeks. Right, right, right. So who would you say was like the most inspirational Prince and J set to you? To me? Well, I have a lot. Uh, they all help me in different ways. But I can like narrow it down to like three. Okay, go ahead. Okay. KK um, is who took me under her wing. Like I went to the high school band camp, I think. And then I, I knew her before then. She, she danced in Memphis. So right. I reached out to her and she trained me for a full year. 
uh, before mm. with my time. So it was kind of like small things. She helped me with my studio show, helped me with running. Um, Tierra. Tierra was probably one of the most helpful um, alumni captains my captain year. She would always call me. We have our real girl talks. Before I went to school, we also did some working together. And Jasma, because Jasma used to come teach my dance team. So it was kind of like, those are the greatest. Baby, you had some heavy hitters. I had some heavy hitters, yes. Because you, you just named Mama Jasma, oh girl. <laughs> I love girl. Jasma. Me and Jasma did a, like, a little movie thing together where we was major race in the movie. So that's when mm -hmm. I was working with her. I was like, her work ethic is amazing. Like, yeah. I love her Jasma. And she's so creative. So Memphis. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Memphis, like, oh. So how was your first tryout experience? Like, were you scared? Were you nervous? Like, how did you prepare? Um, Before I went to tryouts, anybody could tell you from 17, 18, 16, Miss Crowley, I was a J-Sets stalker, baby. Like, any okay. performance that the J-Sets had, I drove from Memphis to Jackson. Anything, if it was a small pep rally, like, I'm making sure I see their face, they see me, they know me. So I kind of got fun with the girls, and they would, you know, text me and let me know, hey, you know, make sure you do this and make sure you do that so i feel like i was fully prepared in my mind so i get yeah. there anybody who's been to try out y'all know it's super cold in the ac i really think they do that on purpose that's another topic though they have free the ac so we in there we go through interviews i got my suit on interviews is probably to me the most easiest part um then we go to the next the next steps uh body cuts was really easy i was really really skinny um the individual dance i had changed that dance a million times because like i said i didn't work with <laughs> And I had a year to prepare it. I didn't prepare this in like a week. I did it for a year. So it was just the same song. I fell in love with the song Sally um, by Sam Sparrow because I seen the girls at their field show. Okay. I had to make me a little piece to it. So my, my song was Sally. Uh, I went through and I had an aerial in it. And the, the floor was cold. And you know, your feet sweat a little bit. So because you're nervous. And I hit the aerial. I was like, <gasps> to the next move. So I was excited that I didn't mess up. Everybody looking excited. So we get to the final day. Uh, I got our first round. I really want to say it was me, Nicole, Autumn, and Doug that got our first round. I think. I just know for sure it was me and Nicole for sure as freshmen coming in. So, yeah. try to really, I do want to say super hard. It's just like when it's open, you can see the competition in the room. So, you can be like, dang, she, you know, she just ate that up. She may have taken my spot or, you know, I think I'm good. So, far, I'm, you know, I think I'm the best right now. So, and the thing about it is, you the first round pick, so baby, you already know you went, girl, come on now. Yeah. So, um, how did you feel, like, once you made Princeton Day Fit? Um, like, the same day I made it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, after trials was over, I ran and just gave KK the biggest hug ever, because, girl, thank you. Like, you really helped me a lot. Like, to this day, I owe my life to KK. Like, anything she needs, she got it from me. I love KK. I got back in the car. Uh, as I was walking out, I was like, um, I don't want to, you know, be too excited because it had some friends that, that win and they didn't make it. So I went to, I got in the car, I'm like, girl, I made it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I made it. And I know your mama was. Neva, Neva couldn't come, so I called Neva and she on the phone, she yelling and screaming and cussing, B, you made it. You made it. I'm like, yes, but you know, I got a long ride home. So the whole ride home, I ain't, I'm just excited. like, your girl's a passage Jason. Okay. <laughs> I'm starting to look for some hair for the season. I'm trying to get my class together. I was just really excited because the next week I had prom too. So it was just a really high moment for me. I was yeah. getting like seven days straight. I'm glad you got that experience, girl, because a lot of people don't get that experience, okay? Because baby. So how was it, you know, transitioning from, you know, you being in the community dancing to now you being a collegiate dancer? Like, how was that transition for you? Um, It was very humbling going from the top of the top captain for a long time to your back. You know, you have to prove yourself again. So it was it was different as far as learning the style, because like I said, we would have different dancers come in and teach us as a diva or, you know, it something that the girls made so the style was all over the place when it came to learning j sets for a band camp it was like this is what it's gonna be don't change it don't move it this is how you do this so it was kind of like starting all the way back over mm -hmm. as a freshman you know you don't have well at that time we didn't have no say so it was just like you learn it you move on you cry you move on you get back up and try it again so it was just very humbling to come in and just start from scratch some people didn't know I, I came from the diva, so to them that was their first introduction of me to them. So right. it was just very different. Yeah, yeah, and I, 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 like you said, it's humbling. Like you have to like really 
you have to be in it, you know, you really have to be in it. You have to be ready to learn, you know. So how was your experience with KG and what is something that she taught you throughout your years as a collegiate dancer? Oh, I love me some KG. <laughs> okay, something she taught me was just like, I don't want to say the words, but it was just kind of like, forget everybody. Like, you got here for a reason. So don't let what outside people tell you or comment about you make you second guess yourself. She was very big on know yourself. Don't let none of this stuff change you. Like, you can see the change in people when they become dancers and they get a little bit of hype. She just makes sure you stay true to yourself. That's something she always said. So... Could you tell us any, you know, good, memorable moments with your captain? I got two. One is a crazy moment. So we had got kicked off, you know, the incident of 19. And no, let me start over. Our upperclassmen had got kicked off. We were still on the team. So, you know, the freshman rule at that time was no party and X, Y, and Z. And our upperclassmen had got kicked off. So we were like, okay, well, our upperclassmen going to the WT party. We going to go to the WT party too because, like, all this over, right? We get to the party. It's me, Amber, and Nicole. And um, we see KJ. She's like, what y'all doing here? We think she playing, you know. We see her again. We turn it up. We stand on the table. All we hear is, get your, get down. <laughs> she going off. We embarrassed. Like, everybody look, everybody, I know KJ. So everybody looking at us like, ooh, like, what they doing here? Mind you, it's the WT party. At that time, you know, all the WT, our crab brothers, you know, we think we cool. We think we upperclassing almost. No, she embarrassed us really, really bad in front of the entire party. <laughs> you can, let's talk your mom you can do it from the party because you ain't taste back or you posted it. Right. Ago. So, yeah. all right, we're thinking it's over, the embarrassing moment's over. No, we get a long page, like two page message. What the f is wrong with y'all? Y'all got y'all mine. Y'all, okay, I got y'all. Like, she's going out. Like, she's like, you know what? I got y'all tomorrow. We still have practice tomorrow. So okay. we go to practice. We like, I hope she in a good mood. We don't got to see her later. So it's time to walk off the field. I think it was like a Saturday morning. It's time to walk off the field. She's like, where y'all going? Meet me back at Watts of Hayden. And we just, <laughs> like, we got so really bad. Like, it was taking so long for what she had us do. She for what she had us doing. And she was just like, you know what, y'all can see yourself. I'm finna go, but y'all need to hold yourself accountable. So she left us in there working out on our own. That oh my was, God. It was a good moment. It was like, I don't know. It was funny to look back on now that this house was pissed. We was all yeah. pissed. So that was a good moment. And then once we were kicked off for a little bit, I think this was maybe the Southern game. For some reason, KG said, I'm gonna wear a frontal. Oh, okay. She wants to <laughs> so I get a call. Crowley calls me. I'm at the game. She's like, where you at? Where you at? I need you to come so KG, KG me down. You know how to do that? I'm like, yeah, here I come. So me and KG go upstairs to the bathroom. We crying, laughing, because why are we back here? Oh, my God, KG. <laughs> Who told you to put a frontal on? Like, so that was just, it's just small moments that me and KG share that are very, very memorable. Because when we always talk, we always like, dang, we're really the same person. Like, we just go through yeah. a lot of we kind of have the same mindset. So I will say, like, that's one of my favorite characters. So let me ask you, let me ask you this, like, how did it feel not being able to dance your full first season? It was times that I cried, me and my sisters and my crab brothers, we cried because it was just like, this is something we worked so hard for. And at that time, it was like we're doing regular work outside of, of course, doing extra work. And it was just natural. So yeah. it was kind of like going to the games as a regular person was just, it was boring. I can't lie. Like, it just didn't have the same feel effect. It was watching them dance. And then it was all porn came. And the last song played, Zero Zero Hit. Mm. And everybody stands and just, woo, they throwing up they set. Because, you know, we still have the sisters and brothers. And it's just like, dang, like, this is supposed to be the time for me throwing up my J. And it's sad. It's, yeah. It was feeling it out, and then being on probation for a year, it just kind of stopped a lot of other stuff, like joining things, and it just really prolonged a lot of processes outside of the band. So, do you feel like being that you you didn't get that full experience? Do you feel like that was a hindrance in any way? To like my dancing? Yeah. I never thought about that. Um, I will say this, even though we weren't on the team, we still danced. We still made sure, okay, okay we're going to go work out. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. It was just kind of like, 
a slap in the face and it was a very bad feeling to see the J6 come in, here get ready and we in regular clothes. Right. Right. I get it because I, I I hate that that even happened. Like that was such a bad time at that at that point. What do you think you learned about yourself as a crowd? Um, I know a lot of people say they feel like I was the weak, like the weakest link of my crab class. It was just very different. I think I never danced to band music before I came, and I'm so used to like the community style. So when I came, I kept I'm like I'm dancing for I'm dancing for I'm watching video and it did not look like I was dancing full out and it was just like I don't know I lost so much weight I was just getting super super skinny but at that time I felt like I was going so hard but it's just like I wish I could go back and tell myself you gotta go a little bit harder you gotta do a little bit you gotta think bigger instead of thinking in your box you're dancing big in your box you gotta get a little bit more space Ooh. I got this I got this <laughs> you got to a little bit bigger the stands. Well, I think we're a little bit intimidated because I was so afraid of falling. Right. So what J set element would you say was the hardest thing for you to grasp? Like, was it the pool? Like, what was it for you? The hardest thing for me to grasp. Okay. A hard thing to grasp was the field show. So you can learn it and you know it'll be a one, two, three. Four, but once that music come on, you have to learn how to do the move full out, but you're still going to cut it. Like, there is, truthfully, there's a cut. Like, once you yeah. add formations to things and you start, they start speeding the song up, some moves get cut off because there's just not enough space for that, you know, that move. So it was hard to learn the balance between doing everything and doing, you know, the biggest parts of it. Because once you have formations, you now change legs for certain counts because you can go to the left, but the move is to the right. So it changes a lot of stuff for people to understand why why the field show don't look like that. When the when formations come in, we don't do formations in the dance. There are no, we're gonna walk to it. It's gonna be you're moving with that dance that's supposed to stay still. So right. that would be the most probably the most hardest part for me. Yeah, transitions can can really mess some things up. If if you don't know what you're doing, not not saying that you don't, but if you don't know what you're doing, you can really mess up transitions and stuff like that. So I get that one thousand percent. During the Valley game, when Nisi said, Dan, you got this, how were you feeling at that moment? <laughs> and that's what you say she said. We'll go with that. But um, that game, I was very, very annoyed just for some other reasons. Um, yeah, we'll just stop it. Yeah. There. yeah. <laughs> uh, as a crab, who was your squad buddy? My squad buddy was Mac and Kiana. Okay, okay, okay. I did see you was just with Mac. Okay, yes, yeah, ma'am. Yes, Shout out to Mac. Okay, yes, ma'am. So going from you know your freshman year to now you going into your second year as a Princeton J said, what did you want to do differently? Going into my second year, like my sophomore year. Yeah. My sophomore year, I was just praying that we had a season because, as you know, um, we didn't finish basketball season my freshman year because COVID came around. So my sophomore year, I'm like, God, please just let us be able to go back to school. So um, we did a lot of practicing for the beginning of August, and then we had so many COVID cases, COVID cases, we stopped having practice. So I'm just like, God, please, like, you know, I'm working really hard. I really want to show that, you know, I've been working. I know they tried to play in my face freshman year. So I'm ready to show them what's up. Like, I'm ready to really put on for, you know, the work I've showed. So sophomore year came, and I think our season started in, like, was it January? No. Sometime in the spring. Yeah, it was, like, around March. Yeah. March. It started around March, and then just, like, go time. Like, it was already weird with coming back with basically two upperclassmen for me, because in that mindset, me and Amber are still, you know, we're still kind of new. So we only had Mary and Kiana. So it was just like, we're now having to be upperclassmen and we kind of really don't know the ropes. So we just have to show for a lot with all the freshmen that we had. And it's just kind of like, I have to be that example. I want to be the big sister that I didn't have. I want to be the upperclassmen that I didn't have. I want them to be able to come to me and work with me and be able to learn, you know, different things from me outside of dancing and dancing as well. So I just have to carry my weight plus 10. Yeah, yeah. Because at that time, like, that was another season where it was cut, you know. And I just hate the fact that you y'all y'all didn't get those two first year experiences, and like 
y'all could have done so much more. You know what I'm saying? And I, I wish y'all had more games that springtime because, you know, Kiana was captain. You know, that was one of my favorite captains as a child. And I just, uh, that would have been a great experience. Like, that really would have been a great experience. Speaking of Kiana, how was Kiana as a captain? And what is something that stuck with you that she taught you? Kiana was very, very sweet. Like, I don't even, there's no time Kiana raised her voice, actually. Um, something Kiana taught me. Kiana used to be on the bus before the games. And she would just be going over it. Like, Kiana was a very, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm not changing it. This is what it's going to be. So, I just, I think someone told me that she used to stay up all Friday night just going over the list, going over the book, going over the music. Like, Kiana was very timely. She wanted to do this, this many times, and that's what it is. So, Kiana taught me that. Yeah. I love Kiana, man. She she changed a lot of people's minds, and I love the fact that she did that. I was trying to play with Kiana, our basketball season. And it was just like, I don't know why that girl is amazing. She's very clean. Kiana just does not, she's not overly sexy. And that's yeah. fine if that's her preference. She did amazing. Kiana, yeah. she had energy. When it was time to get sexy, Kiana had that face. You got to know that face that Kiana, Kiana was like. And the finesse was nasty. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. Finesse. Kiana was amazing. <laughs> So now that you're considered an upperclassman, who was your squad buddy? My sophomore year, my squad buddy was Kiana Renee and Lania. Okay. Okay. Oh, you had two. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And you had two good girls. Yes, ma'am. I had the style girls. Yes, the staff. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> so how was Miss Crowley as a sponsor? Oh, Miss Crowley. So my freshman year, me and Miss Crowley, we really didn't talk a lot. Um, I don't know. I'm just getting used to things and I didn't know, you know, is it cool to have a relationship or is this a sponsor and, you know, dancer type thing. But we really started getting closer probably my sophomore year. We would talk more. Um, she can tell you to this day, I am a very close out person. So even when I got captain, like if I ever have a problem, it's very rare that I speak on it. But she would always say, you know, I know you don't like to talk, but if you ever need anything, just call me. But Sometimes Miss Curly is like a friend. Sometimes she's like a sister. Sometimes she's like a mom. So one thing about it, she will always say, like my captain year, I will always come to her with ideas. I'll just be like, Miss Curly, she's off the rip. She's like, no, no, Kyla. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I'm like, just just listen, girl. Just listen. Just listen. I got an idea. But we work really good together. Like, we can just give each other that look. And we already know it's yes or no. Is we going to add this? We're going to take that away. Like, Curly was really cool. Like she's like the cool big sister that you can go do the bad stuff with. Like, and then other yeah. times she's like mom. Like, what her word is, what her word is. So I'm really yeah. She played her different roles. Yeah, she played her roles. I'm very appreciative to her. I love her as a sponsor. I wouldn't want anybody else as a sponsor. I wish she could be the sponsor for the rest of her life. Okay. Like, I, and she could do some hair. One thing about Miss Curly, she could do some hair. I don't know if it's her era that she came in on JC. It's how she do that hair. She can curl some. Hair. Here. Mm, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad that y'all got uh, uh, Chloe's, you know, sponsor. I'm glad because she needs to stay over there. Okay. She needs yes. To stay. Yes. So, what was your personal favorite performance in 2021, like spring 2021? Kiana's year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, my favorite outfit is Hollywood. So I want to say that whole game was. I was on go that ponytail. I was on go. Yeah, the curly ponytail that was cute. Thank you. I love that curly ponytail. That was cute. Um, so how did y'all how did y'all create the show in twenty twenty one? I believe um that was between Miss Crowley and Kiana, and then we got to practice. You know, we'll say, well, what if we did this? What if we did that? So I really want to say those two were the top creators for that, and then they brought it to practice, and we just started bringing it together. Mm -hmm. Did you like the fact that, you know, at one point, the springtime, y'all had a whole, you know, four game season going into fall? Like, did you like that whole transition? Um, me personally, I was fine with it because us having that fall off was really different. Like, I always, you know, yeah. after you get kicked off for a little bit and then COVID came. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to have my first little spring semester to myself to enjoy it. COVID came. So when the fall came, it was kind of just like, let me see what it's like to be a regular student. So I'm happy to be able to have that experience with, with still being on the team. It was just like, you know, I'd rather not. I want to do JCS all four years. 
So when it went back into the season time, it was just like fun on top of fun because this is where I want to be. I know I'm enjoying it. Yeah, and then you can keep you can stay in shape too from that springtime going to you know the fall. You can stay in shape. Everything's a good transition. How was that? Uh, that one performance that y'all did on the field where like y'all had different you know field shows that that you know old field shows how was that uh it was cool um when we first found that we was doing it miss crowley would call all the alumni and be like hey do y'all remember it and they remembered it i thought that was the coolest thing ever like they even had some older videos from back then i don't know if it was from practice or when they did it so it helped mm-hmm. out a lot because you know some of the uh, the videos are kind of distorted on youtube so right. they knew some of it, and they could send some of it, and that was really cool to, you know, see the history come back alive. Um, it wasn't hard. It was just kind of like, we want to look exactly like them. We don't want to tear it up. We want to make sure it's right. So it was just a lot right. of perfect. Yeah, and I'm glad that they came back and, you know, taught y'all how to do it. Like, a lot of people that can't do that, so I'm glad they did that. So going into, you know, the 50th, the 50th year, how was Amber as captain, and what did she teach you that really stuck with you? Um, Amber really loved her freshmen. I will say that. Like, she treated her freshmen like they was literally her own babies. Um, Amber's year, at that time, I knew that I was going to be the only person left of 19 after she left. So I was really just trying to prepare myself for if I am awarded this position, am I going to be able to take on this responsibility? So a lot of that time, I was just practicing my leadership styles, or when she was absent, I was just making sure, you know, while she's gone, I can handle things, or make sure, you know, you know, things get done still. As my sister being the captain, I looked at as the second oldest person on the team, I still have responsibilities just without a title. Exactly. Right. And that's how you're supposed to do it. Like, you're supposed to be able to go in, if she's not there, take over for a little bit, you know? I, I I like the fact that you did that. I love the fact that you did that. Did you did you think in 2021 that y'all would even touch 10 field shows, baby? I I don't even think I've seen a a, a season where it was 10 field shows. Like, <laughs> so I I don't even remember a lot of 2021. It was that was a crazy year for us. But I just remember Dr. Little just coming in with, "Hey, we're doing this. Hey, we're doing that. Hey, we're doing this." Like Dr. Little was on one and. If you don't want to repeat the field show, you know, it's time for us to get moves. And we were just busy. It was a very, very busy year. I think that's the first year that we went to Miami, correct? Yeah, that was. So that was different. It was just very different. You know, that's, I think that's when the time started changing. It was just mm-hmm. turning, changing. So just getting adapted to the new style. Yeah, yeah. It was needed. And I, I love the fact that y'all hit 10. Y'all needed to hit 10, like. I would I don't say think. my favorite field show of 21 was the one we performed at at Memphis. Which one? Oh. Uh, and I, I, mean, I think it's how I'm dancing. Yeah. I think it's how I'm yeah. dancing. That was, that was a bomb field show. Yeah, I love that one. I love that one. That was probably my second favorite. I love the glow. That was, you know, that was my one of my favorites. Yes. And what's crazy, glow was not even supposed to be for that year. It was supposed to be for the previous year. So it was just mm. like a full circle moment. Mm, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh. Wait. What's Glow? Glow is a two part, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And When Doves Cry. Ooh, that was a good one. Ooh. Ooh wait, wait, wait. Made I'm, that up. I'm changing it. When Doves Cry. Is okay. Crying. Okay. <laughs> I'm being yeah. Because, baby, When Doves Cry, that was, a, that was a hit. That was a hit. I don't know yeah. how Keanu made that up, but, baby, I she don't ate know that. How she did that. Like, that was a, that's, that's the new classic. That's the new classic right now. Okay. So it was always said that you made up the screen stand routine. How was that process creating that screen um, routine and executing it? Ooh. Okay, let's let's run down the week. So I think that was the week of Southern. Uh, Amber was sick that week. So we had practice. We're just doing little stuff. And I'm like, Miss Carla, can we do a stand routine? She was like, no, Carla. We just did one. Uh, talking about 19, so stand routine. Uh, to Summer Walker song, forget the name. And I was like, okay, so what if we don't do it to the same tempo? And then we also had to get the show. She was like, then what song? And I'm like, girl, we used to march to the field to uh, scream. And I'm like, that just sounds so good. And I was like, what about scream? So she was like, okay. Me and her started working together. And she was like, so what if we did 
a old sand and a new sand and an old sand and a new sand. So we're looking at Scream. I think it came out in like 1995. Don't mm-hmm. quote but very old song. So we're looking at the count song there and then we're trying to add it to some new ones and we just got to playing with it. It was like, she's really good with like accumulations. Like, I think that's the right word when you're making it look like a, a visual. So we right. just started putting it together and then uh, other girls saw it and they just started coming. It just, it just turned into this big, big nice field show. I mean, not field show, stand routine. So it was supposed to be for Southern. That's the crazy part because you know we're on the track mm. at Southern. Right. And I just thought that was the nicest like view of when you can see it because everyone's standing over us. But right. the band decided not to play that song for Southern. We, they want to play it for Alcorn. And just so happened that was the perfect time for it to be debuted. Yes, that was literally perfect because the stands, that was perfect because you can actually see how it just changes up. Uh, yes, yes. Everything was like literally perfect. Like a lot of people say like that was one of the best stand routines in a long time from any college. So, you know, you got to pat yourself on the shoulder, honey. <laughs> pat yourself on the I, shoulder. I, I really can't think of favorite between King's Affirmation and scream. Oh, oh, that's a, oh. I, I don't know. know. Oh, that's a I good. Don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. Ha- because we don't really get to see faster stand routines. I'm gonna go with scream. Okay. That's I the only it. reason. That's the only I reason. Think, <laughs> I think for me. King's Affirmation has a slight edge only because I had never have seen the movement through the stands. It may right. have been done before. I don't watch, but I've never seen it. So that yeah. was very innovative to me of us. No, yeah, no one fell. No one so. It was literally perfect. Like everybody played their part. Everybody did what they were supposed to do. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So did you know that you was going to become a security guard at the Southern Gang? <laughs> because baby. <laughs> Well, oh my gosh, they just they didn't care, the football team didn't care it was like everybody was so hyped, the intensity was up, Kenji was doing good the outfit was eating like, but it yeah. was so cold oh my god, it was so cold, so I think everybody was kind of irritated just a little bit, well I know I was, I hate being cold but I didn't know that was going to happen, it was just like they kept cutting the line even the security that worked there was cutting the line and we just kind of over it like everybody's kind of heated because it's just an unspoken rule, you know, not, not to do that and we just, what was that, rock the house. And it just kept coming close, kept coming close. I'm just like, okay, here we go, yellow. Like, I'm finna cut up on y'all, show y'all just a little bit of okay. what's up. Because everybody, everybody should know, do not cut the line. Everybody Even should I'll know that. Y'all know that. Right. Girl. He got what he deserved. But he did apologize, so I will say that he did apologize. Good. Um, Agent got him on Twitter, so that was a big <laughs> thing after. But he did come and apologize. So we cool. We're cool. Oh my God. So what made you do so many different hairstyles in 21? Baby, you had the short curly look. You had the long look. I loved it. Um, I just think hair is a part of your uniform. Like, yeah. I don't know if that's a me thing, but I just feel like every hairstyle does not go with your uniform. I could be wrong. That's just me. You're right. You definitely like. I don't feel like every hairstyle is for every uniform. So when we did uh, Jungle, we did what was the Kiana's field show? Um, uh, you talking about oh the last one? I can't think of the name of it. Let's cry. When we did oh, okay. um, Let's cry. Uh, we seen the I seen the uniform. And I was like, oh my god! Like it was the first home game, and it was our fifth. Was it going to start fiftieth year? That was the 50th year. Yeah, it went to the 50th. So I was like, I want to do a fro. I used to see all the pictures of the older Jason's with the fro, and I just wanted to try it. I got cold feet because I didn't know if y'all was going to eat me up or not, but <laughs> I would. I'm like, either they going to love me or they going to talk about me. I think it's cute. My teammate said it was cute. I definitely had an extra wig in my bag because just I just got cold feet. I don't know. I just got scared, but I wore it, and it worked out good. It really looked good with the uniform, so... I just yeah. want to try some new curls. I love the other one with the um, teardrop, the with the curly, and it when you were um doing like this, and your that hair was just you. like, I yeah. love that. One. What was your favorite look, though? Mm, 
My favorite look, would, I would say the Afro, just because I've never seen it. Well, I haven't seen it in a while because they used to do it back in the day. So it just gave you, you know, the J said feel. Like I just feel like I had the spirits of the older J says in me that yeah. game. So being that, you know, you say that your hair is a part of your uniform, do you feel like it's appropriate for everybody to have the same hair or different hair? I don't like the same hair. I, don't quote me, I sometimes feel like it's kind of high school only because we have so many different shapes and looks and feels. I may not look good with a bust down middle part that's a blank cut. You know, that might be someone yeah. else's thing. So even though it's a part of the uniform, I feel like Jay says, let that be your individuality. Like you can show who you are through your hairstyle since we're twins and everything else. So I think mm -hmm. different is cute just because some things look better on certain people or some people just don't like that at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, how was the 50th for you? Like how was the 50th uh, anniversary? Oh, that was amazing. It was crazy to be able to see, like, all them come back. Like, and that wasn't even everybody, but the field was full. So it was really just, like, I don't know. It's like watching history right in front of your eyes. Like, people that you learned history about, they're right here in your face and dancing. And you can see how the style has changed and progressed. Like, mm -hmm. it was just really I don't even have a word for how amazing it was to see them. Like how you, how we look now is they look a little different or just like right. how, we, how counts change and the, seeing the creators of the counts, like girl, how did you make it? Like, right. It was exactly. Really cool. Yeah. It, was really cool. and it could have been way more girls. It could have been way more girls. Way more. It Baby. That could have been nasty. I mean, it was, it was nasty. It was nasty, but it, it could have been, Nasty up, but so and since oh. freshman year, you know, freshmen don't march back. Sophomore mm -hmm. year, we had the COVID thing. So, my junior year, um, I don't even think junior year, I don't think we marched back. Did we march back? I don't think so. I don't I have to go back and look. I have to go back and look. I don't think we did, but I know for last year, we marched back with the alumni and I got to leave. I didn't even expect to leave. I didn't know, you know, it was my first time, so I'm like, who, who gonna get in the front? Like, <laughs> And that was the coolest feeling ever. Like, I don't know, it was fun. Nobody was rude, me. It was just a good spirit. Like, it just felt like all the sisterhoods was there. The sisterhood feeling was through the roof. Like, yeah. it, was, it was fun. Everybody wanted to talk and laugh. I didn't know we went up the ramp, too. I, I was tired. Yes. But we went up the <laughs> ramp to being high. I'm like, y'all, y'all not tired. They wanted those stands. Like, they had more energy than the current girls. So, I really enjoyed that a lot. Mm hmm That's a one in a lifetime experience sometimes for some people. So, you know, they be ready. They be ready, child. So speaking of leading, before becoming captain in 2022, was that something that you wanted? Obviously it was, but you know, go ahead. <laughs> um, freshman year, I didn't feel so confident, so I didn't think about captain at all. Sophomore year came and um it was between me and Amber because, like I said, we only had two upperclassmen and they were seniors. So it was kind of like, if I get it, I'm, I did try out my sophomore year. If I get it, you know, I will stand up to the play. I will own up to the play. I make sure everything is done. And if I don't, you know, I still have another year. Cool, you know, cool. Um, and then it came to the year I tried out for and I got it. And I was just prepared as usual, doing the same things. But I think I showed a little bit more leadership throughout that year than I did my sophomore year. Mm. So Yeah. Child, yes, ma'am. So when you did receive that captain position, did you know exactly how you wanted your team? Yes. How did you want it? <laughs> I am a very, like, close to perfectionist. I want to write it out. I want to have it done. I don't want to do anything last minute. I didn't do anything last minute unless, you know, it had to be last minute. or some changes in the band or something like that. I just wanted a team that was full of heavy hitters. I wanted everybody to have, even if it's just not a collective heavy hitter, you can have five girls that's great with memory. You got five girls that's amazing at running, five girls that's going to eat that field up every time when some girls that's good in the stands. Everybody's not going to have, you know, the same traits. I just wanted everybody to collectively bring something to the team. So when it's time for a collab or say something ever happened, then we only got the freshman and we only have upperclassmen somebody got to be able to bring something to the table so yes, I was very my team. 
Yes, ma'am. Exactly. Like, were you nervous getting that captain position? Like, did you have any self doubt? Like, how did you overcome that if you did have it, those issues? Um, nervous, no, because even though I didn't get to like some years, I didn't get through fully. I still had a lot of confidence in myself. Now, self doubts at that time. You know, when you get captain, no matter what team you're on, every captain or every team has their their reigning supreme. So at that time, it was kind of just like people look at Dom as I, I reign in supreme. It's kind of like, oh, my God, what did she do that she was so loved? People love right. her in our um, sisterhood and outside of our sisterhood. I'm like, what is it that she did? So I tried to study her for a little bit. And I say for like the first game or two, I was just like, I want to try the method that she did or try to dance like Dom. The dumbest thing I ever did because I, I'm not Dom. <laughs> right, I'm not Dom. right. I'm not Body size. I don't. I didn't grow up in that era. Those were my upperclassmen that you know instilled the things that they instilled in her in me. So I had to learn to just be myself. Like I would say, the first home game, I started getting comfortable with how I do the stands. Like I cannot help, you know, where I came from. My captain, my upperclassmen. Only thing I can do is build on that and instill the better version of myself into my freshmen. Right, right. And the thing about it is that's very important. Like you have to dance for yourself like as far as like you can't be anybody else at all so i do understand you know looking up a captain and you know trying to trying to see what worked for them but it's always important to like just be you you know and i love the fact that you grasped that early and not too late <laughs> okay so how do you feel about your season overall? Like, do you feel like you had a slow start? Because some people felt like you had a slow start. I don't feel like I had a slow start. I feel like any other captain, like, that's not a two-year. Like, I'm just getting used to the position. Like, one thing I had to learn very quick, the energy that you have on your regular row is not the energy that you can have in the front. And that's something I feel like I wish somebody would have told me. I can dance the same, and I'm still a good dancer. But when you're in the front, you are carrying yourself in the load of your team just off the first thing that you throw alone. You have to have so much power that you are captivating by yourself. Not only you look yeah. good as a collector, but as a captain, do I want to watch you? Do I want to pay attention to you? Or am I waiting for the uh, short sassy that makes us the middle and tall and tough to go? So it's kind of just like, are you going to demand that much attention? And that's something I had to learn very quick as to, I don't want to say dancing harder, but I had to go harder. Just for that spot long it was very lonely on the first row i don't have my home girls to look at like can i go can i not and then right you know the band gets excited they'll bring something back <laughs> it cut off on the middle row so it's kind of like you got to have that communication skill as to be pre-prepared like if they go again hey yeah middle row you can go ahead or am i going to throw this account again so it's all about being prepared yeah you got to think ahead i always have to think ahead all the time <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad that you said that because a lot of people don't say that. Like, you being on, like, that last row, on that second row, like, you can't give that same energy. You have to give a total different energy. Like, nobody has ever said that. So I'm glad that you pointed that out. Um, We know being captain is a hard task. What was hard for you as far as being the captain? Um... Me personally, I loved it. I didn't find anything hard. Like, if Miss Crowley was to say, Kyle, I need you for a fifth, I'm packing up from Texas. I'm going back to Jackson. Like, I really enjoyed my time <laughs> on the team. But something I will say that I dealt with my captain year that was hard for me was, like, like the grown woman weight thing. Like, I had small doubts in my size where it was just like, I want to go hard. I just want to get back skinny. I want to get back skinny. So that was something I had to deal with, just looking at, you know, when you're a freshman, coming, your freshman is fit because they're so right. young. And I was the oldest on the team. I was the last of 19. And so it was just kind of like, I kind of had self-doubts in my body. Yeah. I had to just realize, like, you know, I'm never going to look like freshman year Kyla again. Like, so that's something yeah. that was a little hard for me. Yeah. And people would make comments, like, they would still be, like, nice, nasty about it. Like, oh, they look thick. You know, they look thick this year or something like that. But it was still kind of just like, I don't want to look thick. I want to look But let me tell you something. Baby, you looked damn good, your cat the year, okay? Baby, you looked good. Thick in the right area. You was 
really close, very close to Tierra. We haven't had a Tierra since Tierra. <laughs> yeah. Very close. So don't feel bad about it. You looked amazing, okay? Thank so, you. So what would you say was the greatest, cha- like one of your greatest challenges, you know, being a captain? Like, what did you face that was, what was a bad obstacle that you had to like overcome? I love my year. I don't, I didn't have no problems. <laughs> like, I had, well, me and Ms. Crowley, let me correct myself. Me and Ms. Crowley had the team so prepared. It was just like, there was no obstacle that Jesus was like, I got to stop and fix it. Now, something that was challenging my captain year was band camp. Only because it's kind of like it's all you. You finna talk the entire day. You finna do the same thing the entire day. You finna make up things on the spot the whole day. And I had to learn very quick. Everybody doesn't learn the same. You got people who are hands on. You got people who are visuals or audio. So I just wanted to make sure when it came to teaching anything that I was doing all three of the learning styles just to make sure that everybody was okay with it. Now everybody said I teach fast. I don't think I teach. <laughs> But that's what they say. But I just we always go back over it. I just want to make sure that everybody's good. Um, questions? Anybody got a question? There's no stupid question. You know, ask me what's up. So that was probably yeah. the most challenging part: just doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again during being right. Let me ask you about Miami because a lot of people are very confused about Miami. Yeah. When it comes to those things, can you please tell those people that it is a very tight area it's like this big it's like this it's literally like this big if you ever been to the games in miami they get smaller as they go down and we are at the bottom so now i heard i think i read some stuff along the lines of um how is silly and days dancing bigger than better than you you know you're in the front i'm standing over silly and days (laughs) so it got smaller like i said so it was just kind of like i didn't have and then and then y'all had, uh, I think you had recorded a video. And it was at the game. You were saying, like, it wasn't a lot of space. Y'all had the uniforms on and everything. Like, I yes. wish I would have kept that up. Oh, I wish I would have kept that up. But it, that was important because I'm just like, if you just saw that she just said that it's not enough space, then what is the issue? Yeah, it's like the cup holders, you can't move them the way the stadium is. So it's kind of like we tear our knees up. I think on some of the videos, I fell through the sand, actually. So it was just, it was challenging. I hated that that was my first game because a lot of people set the tone as to that's how my season is going to be. I'm not dancing for loud. I'm not doing this and this. And that was my first time before the band, like, just just raw and cut. Dr. Luda can call off whatever he wants. So I'm still getting used to how he cuts off his music or uh, what Marvin tells the band or what these hand signs mean from drum majors. So it was still a lot of getting used to with that being my first game. And but then... That, show, that was my favorite field show that I created. I just want to put Yes, that ma'am. Out. Oh, that... Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because I was going to say, like, before, like, two weeks before, y'all just did the merge. So I don't see what the issue is. Like, if you see that she was... She was just eating the merge. What's the issue? Like, wh- why would there be an issue? Like, calm down. But that was a bit annoying. That was a bit annoying. But I mean, we got we came back at Memphis and we ate it up. So. Show did. Show did. Um, how did you guys come up with City of Gods, King Affirmation, and Beautiful? Okay, City of Gods. Um, we was by ourselves. We was just standing outside the band hall and. and they know me, I'm gonna have a piece of paper and I'm like, one, two, three, one, two, three, this is, these are numbers, this is your, we were just trying to make stuff up because it was a big game. So we were just trying to make stuff up and we was like, let's do this, let's do this. It was a group effort. I will say see them guys was a, a hard group effort that we did by ourselves, like us alone. Uh, beautiful. That was a dream. And it was just kind of like, I see continuous counts, but I can't tell y'all how to do it. But I'm just like, try this. And they just brought it to life. So it was just kind of like we another team effort with a little yeah. bit of push. Um, King's Affirmation was a dream as well. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and I was like, Miss Curly, I wanted, I, at first I told her I wanted like a box. I wanted like this, like Rose. Mm-hmm. And she was just like, we play like musical chairs with it. Because in my head, this is the only count I can 
think of that would move these lines into these lines. Right. So I'm like, okay, now we're we're diagonals. Now what? And she was like, how about musical chairs? So we just started thinking about counts that move. Like we have this count. We have all these counts that go opposite ways. And it just started coming together, coming together. And I will say, King's affirmation didn't get made till Thursday. Mm. Practicing on Friday. We finally got into the AAC because we can't just dance in there. We have to get permission. So we finally got to the AAC. And everybody's talking about counts that do this, counts that do that. And we just planned about ear. We planned about ear. And it just came together like amazing. And this was not supposed to be a part of the routine. It was in the moment. It was supposed to be like some <laughs> style thing, but at the that game I was sick. I was sick to dog, like it was free. Mm. So yeah. like, when I came down and just said, whatever just come out this little body is what it's finna give. So it was still a good moment. So yeah, it was just that was And a- then when you came down when you came down <laughs> Nobody's gonna do this better than done. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> done. He, he eats King's affirmation every time. I okay. gotta find a video so you can see it, but yes, he, he always eats it up. Okay, I, I think I did see it at one point. I think he put it in Star Wars. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, ma'am. But that was actually really smart as far as King's affirmation because you having to figure out okay, what count moves, mm-hmm. and you having to like, okay, that's cute. Okay. I get it. I get it. I really get it. And then for beautiful, oh, beautiful, beautiful was very different because the way y'all, every line has you know a different count, and I really love that. That was very different. I have never seen it done. I like that. Thank you. Yes. Do you like the progression that the the Prince and J sets are going in when it comes to stand routine? Yes, I do like the progression that it's going in. I feel like it's it's going up every year. But one thing I yeah. don't want to see next year from the entire swag is just another year of stand routines. Sorry if I broke anybody's heart. But I feel like it should be a limit because now I feel like if we start doing it too much, we're getting away from the tradition. I feel like that should be a spice on a regular game. That's just me. That's just me. You said that. You said it. Thank you. I've been saying it for, for the longest. I thought it was just me. Um, <laughs> okay. So the Prince and J sets had 10, 10 plus new uniforms uh, for 2022. What would, you, what would you say was your favorite and what would you say was your least favorite new, new uniform? I would say my favorite is Too Faced. Too Faced got this cinching. I don't know if it's a corset in there. But Too Faced really fits. And I like the the matching, you know, the bitch match armband, the bitch match side in the back, the back with the straps. Love it. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't change anything about Too Faced. Uh, my least favorite. Crazily, hear me out. It's Cadet. But, but, the, I just don't feel like it looked like the sketch. Miss Crowley's sketch with Beyonce top tier could have gave me Renaissance tour. But okay. I just don't feel like everything kind of like went the way when it came to the actual uniform. Was it an ugly uniform? Absolutely not. It's just after seeing the sketch, I already had an idea of what it was going to look like. Yeah. And I, the the only thing that I really love about uh, Cadet was the bottoms. I love the bottoms because it was so different. I've never seen, you know, extra fringe like right there. That's cute. Uh, the top could have been, de- it definitely could have been better. But... It was it was cute to me. I really liked it. Now I did like Too Faced. What if, what? You gonna see it once I see it. But it reminds me of Rodeo. Okay. Hmm. If you think about the way that the it's cut and then the stomach and then the back, it kind yeah. of Rodeo. Just a little in a sense. I can see that. I could definitely see, and maybe a different mesh. Mm-hmm. Maybe a different mesh. Yes. Um. But as far as Too Faced, I love the fact with Too Faced, you have two different uh, uh, materials, too. Like, you got that shiny side and you have that, that other I don't know what that other side is, but I love the fact that you have two different textures like this. So, that's cute. Um, um, did you? And I love the heels. We had, like, the heels on. Yes. Now, so even on my bro, it's okay. Wait. Yes, ma'am. It was very cute. So, and I heard that you kept dancing even though you were <laughs> 
here's the thing, man. I don't even. I didn't even get into the stands when it broke. We came up, we kicked, and we doing the ramp. By the time we here, we finna do ching ching ching. And I'm like going back. I'm like, okay. I look down. There's no heel in the shoe. So I'm doing oh everything God. on like I tiptoe on one foot and the heel on the other foot. And I get in the stands. But this year I was known for breaking shoes. So Miss, I tell my Miss Carla, come here, girl. I'm like my shoes, bro. She's laughing. I'm like they finna play the song. Like. Well, what's funny? She saw it on that look at me, and I'm looking like, look, this is my shoe. It's broke. So, <laughs> that was very funny for me. She's like, just put it back on. We're going to put it back on. And I'm like, okay. We're going to put the heel back on. Put it, we put it back on, and it broke off again. So, I mm. really think I changed into some jazz boots. I think I think I did change into some jazz boots. So, yeah. That uh, but, that, but that's the professionalism. That's the professional, because you would never know. Okay, you would never know. Uh, do you do you feel like you got a chance to fulfill everything that you want that you set up for yourself as captain? Uh, yes, I do feel like I got to do everything. Only thing I wanted to bring that I didn't really have a chance to do was I wanted like three new parades. Yeah, yeah. Everything else was really I got to do. I just I packed a lot into that year because I know like. I just wanted not a rebrand, but I just feel like it was time for us to elevate. Upgrade, upgrade, yep, elevate. A lot of people don't like me for that. They feel like I tried to change JC or make JC too sexy. But this is the argument I have in my head. I'm just putting a disclaimer out there. I'm okay if you disagree. But as time changes, we cannot do what we did in 2012 competing with the 2022-2023 teams. Not that it exactly. looks good. They are amazing, but things are elevating. Stunts are elevating. Uniforms, hair, lace, things are changing. So if we don't get with the times, they're going to say the JCS are outdated, and we're never going to exactly. give a chance to say that. Right. You're right. You're definitely right. A thousand percent. I agree. <clears throat> Speaking of, you know, a lot of people love the, the new material from 2022 as far as, like, count bars. A lot of people feel like, you know, this is old meets new. How did you come up with a lot of the uh, material for 2022 as far as stands? Uh, as far as stands, that was a group effort. I will say, like, almost every girl on the team didn't make a stand or helped another girl make it. So I think I made three, four. I'm not, I don't even know. I just know it was the week, weeks was coming. I'm like, hey, I, we need more. We need to do more. Right. Or just one or two here or something like that. And I was a very prepared captain to the point where they are sending the list. We'll say we want to play this game. I'm like, this song is X amount of songs. I mean, X amount of minutes long. That gives me this amount of time to throw it if I do it this way or that way. I was counting the music to count the amount of times I throw it to the amount of times I wanted to see it, to the amount of, to the call. Like, it was just very planned out. Like, Alabama State game, I was going crazy. I had my girls quizzing me on the bus, like, hey, just give me a song and I can tell you what, what I'm going to call. Like, I just wanted to make sure that it went well. Now, some yeah. games I knew that I just wanted to live in a moment. I will say that. But it was just kind of like a, a group effort when it came to the material. We just had so much. We had extra time because I just wanted, we were so well prepared. We had extra time for a lot of stuff as far as counts and just get stuff done. So, did you give the girls like free range as far as like create what you want? Be creative. Do what y'all do. Bring in yep. whatever you bring in. They'll just bring in and be like, hey, um, you know, I got a new count. Okay, let me see what song you want to hear to. If I like it or didn't like y'all, you know, make sure Miss Crowley is okay with approving it. And we'll just bring it. Or if not, Miss Crowley will tweak it or something and say, hey, let's change this into this. Or, or she just put her finishing touches on it. Yeah, yeah. So what made you bring back continuous counts for Soul Bowl? Ah, um, I don't know. It just was just like last year's last year's classic was really interesting. And I was like, okay, what, what can we make it? How can we make it different this year? And I already knew we was going to do King's Affirmation, the Judas routine, and something that we also did that was different is we marched, we did Tiger Run On. And a lot yeah. of people today still don't know that we did Tiger Run because it was hidden so well. But mm -hmm. I wanted to listen to count just because I've never seen it with a full squad. And it gave a different feel with the full squad because I I commend teams that do that every game to every song because that's a lot of paying attention. 
Yes. Like, Especially for Jay said style. Oh, girl. I commend Team that do that on the regular. Like, that is some real mind control. But I just want to see it with the full squad, and it turned out really good. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have their, you know, thing when it comes to running cuts. Uh, what, are, what is your take on running cuts? Like, do you feel like the girls should be able to do those running cuts? And, and if you can't make that time, you know, you can't perform. Or do you feel like, you know, everybody should get that full experience? Like, what is your take on it? I agree with how it is now. I feel yeah. like running cuts are important. It, are they annoying? It is annoying. But it's kind of like before you become a J set in the emails that they send you about tryouts, I believe they say you have to know how to run in X amount of time. So no one's blindsided. It's kind of a known thing. I feel like that's important. It really helps with stamina. And I just feel like it is what it is. Like I hope it's been like that for the longest. I don't I'm sorry. I hope you can yeah. run girl. Right. <laughs> Like, I'm not even just saying that because I'm a, I'm an alumni now. Being on the team, it's kind of I hated it, but it just paid off. It really did pay off. Yeah, and you stayed in shape too. Like you stay in shape with that. Shoot. 2022, y'all had so many different events. Y'all went to to uh, Good Morning America. Y'all be good. Y'all had so many different things. Like how was that exposure for you? It was great. Um, when I got captain. In my mind, this is crazy. I think I told Ms. Crowley this before I graduated. But in my mind, I'm thinking of branding, branding, branding. Like, this is a team. This is a business. I yeah. want the big test to be at everything. So when I got captain, I was doing some crazy stuff. I was, like, DMing Megan the style. And I was DMing Beyonce. I'm like, you know, if y'all need somebody to um to be in the background, the J says I'm prepared for it. I'm probably going to be the captain this year. Like, I'm DMing celebrities. Like, put us on what y'all need. So... I was just thinking about branding and I'm just so happy that we had a lot of opportunities this year to show who we are. The Be Good performance is probably one of my favorite because it's Beyonce, right? Right. How big can it get in Beyonce? Right. Uh, and did y'all get tickets too? No. Oh, yeah. We, no. we didn't get tickets. Uh, they had a dance off and if you wanted to dance off, you got tickets. Don actually got tickets, which is crazy because he went out oh, there yeah. and he had a little fish and he did good. But we didn't get tickets on. It was a very good experience, though, just to be able to say, you know, put down your dance resume. You know, yeah. we did be good with, for Beyonce. Exactly, exactly. Um, let me ask about this before we go to the next subject. Um, how did you come up with the new entrance as far as, like, prancing into the stand? Remember y'all had on that, um, what's that, uh, Sweet Dreams? Okay, uh, I don't think... So when I first thought of the idea, it was, I don't know if it was the blue and white game or the spring game um, when Didi led. And I was just, mm -hmm. thinking think about it, it'd be cute, you know, just a really a cute change. So the first time we did it was during the 50th, the end of the year of the 50th. So I just brought it back again, just because I thought it'd be a cute, you know, way to get back in the sense, because we always do this. So I just thought that'd be a really different flow change. Just something small, sweet. Yeah, yeah. So, what is your favorite part about being a member of the HBCU dance line, and what's your least favorite? My favorite part would just be continuing, being able to continue dancing after, you know, your community dancing. Like, a lot of people don't get to do that, and I don't think people really understand how special it is to be on a line like that. Like, Yeah. It's a lot of girls go to try out and a lot of girls get their heart broken. And I was, you know, blessed enough to be able to continue dancing. My yeah. least favorite part would be the stalking. Only because <laughs> I don't think people really, like, even if you were, like, A-list celebrities, we're still regular college people. And I don't think people understand that as far as I still want to go to the party and do, you know, certain things I do with my friends, but it's kind of like, it doesn't take away from me. Actually, I'm, I'm like, it takes away from the experience. We already practice every day, all day to go out there and perform for two to three hours. And then it's kind of like we're always on watch. So we're giving up a lot of our college experience just to, in a sense, make other people happy, even though it's our passion. But it's just like if we are not up to the standard of everybody that's watching, we're about to get heat for it all over social media. And yep. I just feel like that's fair because let it be your sister, your cousin, your niece, your mama, 
you know, it's some stuff that you shouldn't, you just shouldn't say that. Like, yeah. why do you feel like it's okay to, to body shame somebody? Exactly. 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 So we're going to go ahead and go into fan questions. So the first fan question I have from a Kenyan Mitchell. Do you consider yourself the show queen? Oh, uh, I never thought about that. <laughs> no, I never thought about that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Cause, baby, let me tell you something. Let me tell you, every time I saw the show, I said, she's switching it up every single time. Like, she's not giving you the same counts. Every time it's something totally different. I don't think you even repeated any counts when it came to the show. I love that. I never paid I never paid attention to that. Only time I would say, like, I said, okay, this is exactly what I want to do to the show was the championship game when we did all the 16s, debut the 16, and then. Yes. So that's the only I can say I really just prepared for, but I just didn't want to be able to, like, I didn't want to go back 40 years from now, watch the show, and be like, oh, my God, I did not utilize my book at all. So Baby, you utilized it. <laughs> I never call myself that. I didn't never think about that. I have another question from Jordan Jones. What was your favorite new count from 2022? My favorite new count would be Gigi's count. It's like this. Ah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I do love that count too. It's it's very it's different. You know, it's very different. I love that it's different. I will say that. I have another question from Ashley. What did you contribute to the present J set that you are most proud of? Does it have to be physical or could it just be mental? Anything. I want to say I made sure my girls didn't have to worry about anything. Like, they didn't have to worry about nothing. It was to the point where it was like, how about it? Don't worry about it. Like, I had, I feel like I had them, I had a bag. Like, when it comes to performance, every Sunday, they already know they're going to get a long message from me. I'm going to tell y'all how many times I messed up at that game. This is what this <laughs> is. how many laps you got. Uh, I love y'all. Keep the sisters good together. This is what I'm expecting next week. These are the possible uniforms because I know y'all want to do y'all hair to the uniform. This is what I'm thinking right now. This is what I got going <laughs> in my book. So, See y'all tomorrow, track at five. Right. So I just feel like I didn't have anything to worry about. Like there was nothing left unsaid. If it came down to something changing, I already got the backup A, B, and C. We're doing C right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I have another question from Keelan B. It says, What more could you see the Press and J sets do to elevate the brand even more than what it already is? Ooh, the J sets going up right now. Um, what more can the J sets do? Uh, uh this is a trick question. I'm, I'm telling, I'm telling y'all. Uh, right, right. Okay, we can take that. We'll take that. We'll take that. Uh, I have a question from Ronald Terry. Name a dancer that danced at another HBCU that inspired you. Brianna. Okay. Brianna is so captivating. Oh my gosh. It's just the look at her face so that you know I'm serious, but I'm so cute I take it on in. Like Brianna oh, gave me Okay. Give me your and attention. And me personally, this is this might be biased. I love a thicker dancer. I just want to see the stripe. I, I want to see. I just love it. I love yeah. it. And then she's chocolate and she just oh she's just so beautiful. It's her in this white uniform. I think it's like a bra and like one yes, leg. The first. It's just the white eyeliner. It just it just bounced off her skin. I can watch the yes, video. Yes, ma'am. I have a question from Samantha Lee. Would you do summer band? Why or why not? I thought about doing summer band. Is I like the ratchetness, but I think it's a little bit too ratchet for me. But I would love it. I would go. But it's just kind of like the middle finger thing. I can't get it with that. But I would go. Yeah. I love it. I'll go watch. But joining, I don't I don't know. Yeah. I, I get you. We see each other. <laughs> now, let's go into Fast Pass. So, you already know Fast Pass is basically me naming three things. Or, you know, you have to pick 
you know, whatever you feel, but it has to be fast, okay? So, top three uniforms, Hollywood. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> That's the top three? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Hollywood, Tiger Girl, Two Face. Okay, okay. Top three least favorite uniforms. Lamb Chop, Nova. Uh, Lamb Chop Nova, uh, second pants. Second pants, okay, okay. Um, leotard or two piece? Two piece. Fast, medium, or slow? Slow. Favorite ramp? I don't have one. Okay. Um, describe each of your freshmen in one word. Yeah. Spoil. GG, mean, Janelle, soulful, Jasmine, sneaky. Okay, okay. Favorite game? Um, out of them state. Okay. Favorite halftime show that you choreographed? Miami game. Mm-hmm. Favorite song in the stands? Hot. Favorite count? That I made? Any count. Okay, 16. <laughs> uh, leading or following? Leading. Okay. Stands or halftime show? Stands. Jazz boots or dance boots? Nancy. Homecoming, Boombox, or Soul Bowl? Soul Bowl. Okay, okay, okay. That was cute. You did good. You did good, good girl. Period. <laughs> okay, so I have a few more questions. Okay. If, if you had an all-star team of 15 Prancing J6, who would be on your all-star team? You already knew that was coming, girl. <laughs> Cameron Stringer. <laughs> okay, oh. Okay. Crowley. KG. KK. Myself. Kristen Washington. Okay. Kat. Oh. After Shama. Saki. Oh, it's getting hard. It's getting hard, Dom. Okay. Five more. Morgan Jackson and Morgan Hightower. Oh. How many I got three left? Yep. And then there were three. Mm. <laughs> Let me get. Oh, okay. Let me get Kiana Taylor. Brie Kemp. Oh, okay. She's gonna give you the nasty counts. Nasty counts. Okay. One more. Let me get Gigi. Okay. Period. That's my period. I love that. I love that team. That's gonna be that's gonna be a creative team. That's nasty. That was hard. Oh my gosh. That's nasty. Cause Brie gonna give you the counts too. Brie and oh, Brie Brie and Morgan. Oh, and Morgan. Ooh. Ooh. The way she the way she helped helped you you helped you with the 16, baby. Yes. I finally I finally got it. <laughs> Morgan is the mastermind behind that 16. Oh, so I finally I, got that 16. It took me a minute. It's not, it's not hard. It's definitely not hard. It's just the arms part. I had to get oh, yeah. I had to get the arms. Um what advice would you give somebody who wants to be a Princeton J set? Before you even get to dance, you have to run. Literally, that's exactly how cuts go. Like, we start outside, we make our way inside. So, if you know that's something that you want to be, don't be the girl who's an amazing dancer but cannot show her talent because you cannot do a part of the cuts. So, practice running. Be true to, be true to yourself. Like my captain told me, once you come and get this fame, because it does come with a lot of attention, 
Just stay true to yourself and your morals. Be your sister's keeper. I would say that. Also, when you're trying out, just be original. Come in. Don't come in and do a field show that we've already done. That's the crazy thing a lot of people do. Be original. I, I was going to do London. I was going to do Sally, but I just sold a song to see. But okay. just be original. Come in here. When you're trying out, make sure your uniform is cute. We are very creative. So come in with the stones, with some French. Do something to make you stand out in a positive way. Make sure you're very professional. We are not just a team. We are a business. So if you cannot be professional. Period. Period. You did that. So what are your future plans? Um, I'm in the process of becoming a state trooper. I have one more test to take and I will be going to training in January. Um, a second route that I could go is I'm also on my last interview to be a child protective service investigator. Yes, so I'm working in my field. As far as dance, I do want to take like heels classes but I don't think I want to dance professionally um this year will be going on 11 years dancing for me and I think I just want to dance for fun I don't really want to be judged anymore I yeah. just want to do it for fun yeah yeah well I want to thank you for coming child it's been thank a long you. time coming you no, know I've been trying to do this for forever <laughs> <laughs> planning it for forever right you know you my girl you know you can call me whatever you want to call. You know, I'm here. I got you. All right. I to come to, the, um, to your dance thing, though. And then, you know, feel about that. It's okay. It's okay. We got next year, girl. We got next year. <laughs> All right. But thank you so much. Thank you. All right.